All right, there we go. Hey guys, as always, Shazam and golly, welcome to Applebee's. All right, questions of qualified immunity, questions of you know your rights. Should you, while an officer is double checking that your CCW permit is real and authentic, should they handcuff you? This one's gonna be a good one. I think by the end of this video, you're gonna have, maybe have some questions like I do, cause it's not super cut and dry, and it's a big W, a big win, for you and for me, especially for concealed carry holders in Connecticut. It's a mess. Like, I originally was gonna do this one as a, as a three pack, as just one of a three pack of topics. This one's a little bit big, and it kind of spun out of control. I got links down below. We're gonna have a conversation. I think it's gonna be a fun one. Buckle up, here we go. Hey, today's episode is brought to you by a new channel sponsor, MetalArtMaker.com and their Concealed Art Series. It's artwork for your wall, but underneath there's a rifle rack so you can grab and go totally concealed and it's lockable if you have kids in the house. They also have a small one that has a couple shelves just for hiding valuables, but I got the big one and it holds my number one rifle perfectly. Y'all know that rifle and you can choose what artwork you like. Check it out. I went with the Vintage World map and it looks great. Link is below and take 10% off your order with code Johnny B when you head over to metalartmaker.com. Big thank you to those folks, new channel sponsor. I wanna show you this and ask you a question after I filmed that stuff earlier today. This is the part that hangs on the wall, but I did wanna show y'all this. There's four places where you actually mount it. I haven't mounted it to the wall yet, but I measured it. It's 16 inches on center. You can put it into, into the studs perfectly, so I did like that. Here's my question, where should I mount this? Give me a little bit of strategy here. Let me ask y'all this, strategy, number one rifle's going into it, should it go cl really close to the front door, grab and go? Should it go in my bedroom for when I'm in sleepy time? Or should it go in maybe a room where I'm spending most of my time in the living room? So let me know, I don't know. I really wanted to ask y'all that. So I, th I, th I think it's interesting, I love talking strategy. Speaking of strategy, y'all crushing that thumbs up before the music even stops, very nice, ha ha ha. -ha. You're very French Italian, ha ha. Tomorrow's a Spicy Friday is gonna be a fun one. I do believe, filming that tomorrow morning. All right, let's talk about this, qualified immunity. All right, I wanna bracket a couple of my biases first. Number one, I'm not a big fan of qualified immunity. I know it's not completely cut and dry. It's not black or white, but it's a little bit murky. I don't like qualified immunity. I don't like at all civil asset forfeiture. So that's a little bit of my bias with this topic. And then also, I live in a really safe area. Like This is really different than where this guy is. I've got no fear of the local cops. They're fantastic as, as a whole. Uh, the city guys in Johnson City, they run radar too much. The county guys are always fantastic. And the state, no, not the state troopers, mm -mm, not cool. But our local guys are great. So if I get pulled over, okay, sorry, I was doing 48 and a 35, I'm sorry. So that's just my bias, like to bracket that stuff. Let me start at the beginning and then we'll get through this court system that went through, it's a big W, went through the federal court system. We got a W coming in for the folks in Connecticut. Back in 2018, I can't pronounce either one of these folks' name. I'll have the whole case down below in a link. The main guy, the driver's name is Basil, B-A-S-E-L. I think that's how you pronounce it. Last name S period, I can't pronounce it. Basil was driving through Waterbury, Connecticut and was in a neighborhood that was known for sex, drugs, rock and roll, heroin, prostitutes, and all sorts of stuff that's either not good or fun, depending on your morality. But he was driving and his GPS stopped, his phone stopped, so he pulled over to the road, side of the road safely to fumble with his phone and try to get it back up. A cop assumed the worst and pulled up came to the window, asked Basil for his ID. Basil handed the ID, but also, I don't know if this is law in Connecticut, but I think we can assume it, told the officer, I have a firearm in the car, and here is my license to concealed carry that firearm. The, the officer, bam, put Basil in handcuffs and put him in the back of the squad car, the prowler, as they called it. And he was detained. Am I being detained? He was detained. Guess what? The officer found drugs nitroglycerin pills for Basil's heart and a thumb drive containing, containing pictures of Basil's father who was, had been deceased. And so there's nothing going on here, nothing going on. We have a citizen, don't chase it, I know some of you don't like the word citizen. We have a guy, an American, pulled over, checking the phone, yeah, in a bad neighborhood, and immediately handcuffed. Now, 
Basil sued, and the argument was, uh, you know what, Fourth Amendment, unlawful, unlawful arrest is what that really was. Now, this has worked its way up to federal court. The officer, and I assume, I couldn't find the officer, I would assume also the officer's lawyer, have argued to have the entire thing thrown out based on qualified immunity, of course. Now, they argued, and this is the part, this is the reason I pressed record today. They, the officer, Officer A, period, I can't say it's too many consonants. Officer A argued that it was reasonable to assume that Basil was a danger or a threat, assumed to be dangerous and that that was a reasonable assumption. And that's a really interesting question. Um, I, you know, I know it's tough for cops to go up to a window, especially at night in a bad neighborhood. It's a lot, there's a lot of nuance there. And then especially if you say, hey, I have a firearm in the car, maybe they get a little hinky, but throw them in handcuffs after they show you willingly, offer you a permit, mm, not so much. They argued that it was reasonable and the federal judge said, no, not today, not on my watch, said absolutely no to that and called it a de facto arrest, that, that Basil was de facto arrested and that it violated his Fourth Amendment rights. We talk on this channel a lot about the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. I do think this is interesting to really stir up a little bit about the Fourth Amendment and get us thinking about that. I do think it's fantastic. I'm not the only one thinking about it. New York Criminal Attorney blog, link below, they have a question on their blog, may an officer handcuff an individual while determining if a CCW license is authentic. Should they handcuff? Should they detain? It's not cut and dry. There's situ there's a lot of different situations. Y'all saw that video that Mr. Guns and Gear posted the other day. Like there's a lot of situations and they're all different. However, in this case, there is a W for folks in Connecticut. And I think for you and me as well, and a big fat pushback on qualified immunity. It's a lot in this case, and I'm glad that that judge had some sense. My question for y'all is, what do you think? Where are you at with this one? Because it's, it's, I think it's good. I think it's important. And the final question is, do you show your handgun carry permit unless if you're not asked to? Some states, they absolutely require it. Some are suggested, but where are you at with that? Does that just stir up more trouble than need be? It's a mess. I'll be back tomorrow on Spicy Friday. Have a good one. See you tomorrow. Bye.